On the fourth day of October, Halloween gave to me four vampire pianists, three dead professors, two Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to our 31 Days of Halloween celebration. Happy October 4th. I am so glad you are here to share it with me, and I am glad I'm here to share it with you. On account of that means I'm alive, or am I undead? <laughs> well, of course, uh, that <laughs> poor wordplay can only mean one thing. We are doing a slight detour in the subspecies series. We've talked about subspecies 1, Bloodstone subspecies 2, Bloodlust, subspecies three, and now we come to Vampire Journals. No, this is not a continuation of the subspecies series, not really, although it is definitely in universe. Although I would say in the chronology of this, this is where it's gonna start to get weird. This takes place sometime after the events of subspecies four. Because some of the characters that pop up in Vampire Journals are not with us anymore at the end of this movie, but they are in Blood, Lust, Blood, Splash. Actually, it's Subspecies The Awakening is part four, but we'll get to that tomorrow. We don't get ahead of any anybody here, all right? We've got work to do, people, and quit jumping ahead to tomorrow, which is another Subspecies movie. So, Vampire Journals is, once again, written and directed by Ted Nicolau. And this is him expanding some of the vampire mythology, but it borrows heavily from the Anne Rice stuff. There, there are courts and sires, and there's a hierarchy, and, you know, that, that's been alluded to, of course, throughout the series. Throughout the, uh, the subspecies series, I mean. But we're really getting a look at the king of vampires here, or one presumes, and then we find out later, maybe not so much, but we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. And so what happens in Vampire Journals? Vampire Journals is the somewhat tedious story <laughs> of Zachary, who is a vampire. This is very Blade. So Zachary was turned into a vampire, and... He is now uh, hunting and killing vampires because, as he is described uh, within the course of the film, he has been cursed with all the, the bloodlust of a vampire, but he has a conscience. He still uh, loves and, and feels guilt and pain and so forth. And that is not great if you're a vampire, right? Like, you don't want to be that person. So... Anyway, Zachary is on the hunt for a vampire by the name of Ash. Ash is the sort of vampire ruler of Bucharest. And he lives in this big fortress. And there is uh, a woman who runs a club there called Club Muse. And she's kind of his human familiar. He also has his vampire ladies, uh, specifically Serena. And um, Serena is uh, a bit of a a bit of a scamp, and uh, as we will find out in in later films, and um, Zachary is trying to kill Ash, and that process is made somewhat easier by the fact that Ash falls in love, uh, not falls in love. He he just wants to drain and make a vampire this woman named Sophia who he sees at a concert and she's a brilliant pianist and he's like oh I could make her a vampire and she would be an amazing pianist forever and he is not gooey like Radu. Radu in the grand scheme of vampires in this series he is the only one that looks as monstrous and is constantly oozing blood although no, none of the vampires can really uh, be accused of being clean eaters. Uh, they're they're not members of the Clean Plate Club, let's say. And Zachary gets wind of Ash, and he says, like, hey, this vampire's been around forever. Ash has been around for a long time. He's incredibly powerful. And so if I'm going to get him, 
which is his plan, get him. If he's gonna get him, then he's he's gotta have uh, some kind of leg up. And so he decides, hey, I can kind of use this woman, Sophia, to lure him out, even though he it's under the guise of, you know, I'm going to protect you because you are in great danger. And she's like, hey, I grew up in New York. I used to walk home by myself all the time. I don't need your help, strange, pale, handsome stranger. And, uh, but sure enough, uh, Ash comes for her, basically kidnaps her. Then, uh, Zachary wants to go find her and confronts Ash. By the way, Zachary has a, a vampire killing sword. That is known as the Sword of Laertes, which is real stupid. It's a bad name for a sword because Laertes was just Odysseus' father from the Odyssey. I know that because as an English teacher who was just teaching the Odyssey, uh, I'm pretty sure that Laertes never actually killed vampires. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't believe I am. At any rate... Zachary is wandering around with this sort of Laertes. Don't worry, everybody. There's the requisite amount of nudity that we need for a movie like this because uh, every now and again, we just have some feeding where uh, a, a be beautiful young woman, generally buxom, will give herself over to Ash and one of the other vampires and uh, they'll feast on her for a bit. And, you know, so we've got some of that. Not not to make a new vampire or anything, just to get some food. You know, vampires gotta eat too. And, uh, but I just wanted to assuage any fears that maybe we had gone more tasteful in vampire journals, because that is not the case. Um, and then uh, Zachary confronts Ash. Ash is like, hey, I got, I've got a deal for you. How about you spend a night here, I'll give you a consort that you can use to feed on guilt free. You, she's, she knows the score. Like she, that's why she is here is to be fed on. Uh, you don't have to feel guilty about this. She's offering herself willingly. And then come tomorrow, you can see, uh, Sophia and, uh, that way, you know, everything's on the up and up and you can, you can go in peace at that point. And so Zachary, uh, ultimately agrees to this deal stupidly because he's got to know this is a, a put on this is not going to go in his favor but he does it anyway and he uh ends up going to hang out with the consort there is a little bit of skullduggery here where uh ash wants to get serena to essentially wait till daylight and then pull Zachary out into the daylight to murder him. And I could have the names wrong here, but I mean, let's be honest, it doesn't really matter. So she doesn't do that. She decides instead that the obsession that Ash has with the pianist, Sophia, is going to disrupt things in their vampire household. So she's just going to let Zachary go do his thing. Um, that doesn't work out. And by the way... Uh, Sophia does uh, end up getting brought to Zachary to, to talk to him, but Ash waits until Zachary is feeding. So when she walks in to see her, you know, in quotes, rescuer, he is noshing on this half naked woman in his bed. And she's like, oh my God, more vampires. And so she ends up drinking from Ash and becoming uh, an honest to goodness vampire there is a final fight between Zachary and Ash down through some tunnels and uh, through some sword play and also sunlight. Zachary ends up destroying Ash and then uh, he and the now newly turned uh, Sophia go hide in a closet to sleep. Uh, very much like the end of the original subspecies where Michelle gets turned uh, much against her will. Although in this case, Sophia has a little more agency in becoming a vampire, but she's also been psychologically tortured for a while. So what are you going to do? Um, and then that's it. And that's the end of the movie. The only reason that I wanted to watch this alongside the other subspecies movies is that Ash and Serena do absolutely make an appearance in the subspecies series. 
And so this is their introduction. This is where we get uh, Ash and, and a sense of who he is and what he wants, which is uh, he is an aristocratic vampire who's running some business dealings in Bucharest and, you know, trying to uh, essentially run a game on the town and run things and have his vampire uh, uh, royalty kind of situation, a vampire fiefdom, if you will. And we'll see how that goes later. But here is the problem with vampire journals. And I alluded to this a bit when we talked about uh, Bloodlust yesterday, which is Sophia is the only actual regular schmegular human being in the movie. And she is not in the movie all that much in the in, as, as things go. It is mostly Zachary's movie, but it's not entirely Zachary's movie because we don't stay with him all the time either. And it ends up being this big mishmash of a story and all the makings of an interesting vampire film are here. You know, there's sort of court intrigue going on with Ash and his sired vampires who are jockeying for uh, attention and power. There's the club that he's running and this human uh, familiar who is kind of tired of being used and a little worried that things are getting out of hand. There are dealings with the community. There's the people that are being used as food for these vampires, but willingly so. Like, all of this stuff is going on. Uh, and, and then, you know, drop Zachary in, this vampire uh, hunter who comes in and kind of disrupts all of this. There is a good story to be made from that. The problem is, as a viewer, it's not all that exciting. Uh, all of this skullduggery is not nearly as, as, as exciting as it sounds. I wish that it were a little more violent. And it's not. It, it needs to be... Look, I mean, we're at the fourth movie in a series of, of low-budget indie vampire films. And this needs to start going off the rails. This needs to start getting silly. And it's not getting silly. It's getting more self-serious. And the more self-serious you get, the harder it is for me to take any of this seriously, which is uh, some sort of reverse proportion axiom of how how good you think the movie is versus how good I think the movie is. And those lines have crossed in a pretty substantial way. I need this movie to be schlockier than it is. And it, because it takes itself so seriously and treats all its vampire subjects as these sort of high and mighty beings, then there's no place for a human being to watch this movie and relate and connect. Sophia just isn't enough to be that audience surrogate. Zachary is just too, whiny and esoteric to fill that role and so it's just a bunch of stuff that happens on the screen as opposed to being an honestly good vampire film even though they're the makings of that they're the, like the vampire uh bride who is like oh you know why don't you pay more attention to me and why are you always paying attention to this new sophia and what if i just murdered her or like help zachary kill you like that's kind of an interesting character there's just not enough of that kind of thing. I need this to be like m even higher melodrama and more hysterical. And you, you know, we'll get to that sort of with part four where it gets just bananas in it, in a lot of ways. But this is a very, like, like I said, it's very Anne Rice and, you know, but not nearly as good as any of that. Even though those are not my favorite kinds of vampires, this is all, everybody feels like they're from a French court um, everybody is speaking very importantly about things that are very silly. And uh, yeah, and it's just not good. It's just not a good entry into the series. And I don't know that there's another good entry in the series at this point. Uh, we'll talk tomorrow about subspecies for The Awakening. And there, there's also a bit of a... Like, so subspecies 3 is 94 these movies come along in 97. Vampire Journals is 97. Bloodstorm Subspecies 4 is 98. So a few years in between sub Subspecies 3 and Vampire Journals. And then where we are going to round things up in uh, Blood Rise Subspecies 5, that is 2023. That's 25 years 
after the last film and what uh 32 years since the the series started so i'm curious uh how how all this goes but we'll see i i know that you know the the last one is pulling from uh all of the movies to some degree but yeah vampire journals just not great just not a great uh, uh kind of kind of film uh it's it's dull it it never gets uh as, as exciting as it wants to be or needs to be to to carry a, this kind of movie forward and uh it's a real disappointment uh other than entering a couple of characters into the canon that show up in later movies there is absolutely no reason to watch this of all the movies and and somebody in um the discord channel was saying like oh do i need to watch these subspecies movies and maybe not, maybe not, certainly not Vampire Journals. If you are listening to this and have never seen Vampire Journals, don't sweat it. You're fine. It's it's not great. Um, but tomorrow we'll get back to you subspecies proper. And then the day after that, we'll be knee deep in uh, subspecies five, the final uh, portion of this. And then we're going to take a break from series stuff for a minute and, and do a couple of movies that are a little newer stuff that I've wanted to see and haven't had a chance to yet. So we'll get into that. Uh, okay. Uh, that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you're enjoying these, even though vampire journals is not a great movie. I love talking about these silly, uh, subspecies films and we're going to do two more of them, whether you like it or not, there's nothing you can do about it at this point. The die has been cast. Our fate is sealed. It is subspecies for two more days. And then we'll do, you know, like actual real movies at that point. But tomorrow we get back to Redu, Gooey Redu, our shit vampire. And I'm, I'm excited uh, to uh, get back to our shit vampire roots and our, uh, our origins of this silly subspecies stuff. Um, I hope you have an incredible October 4th. Enjoy yourselves. If you're listening to this later, whatever day it is, I hope that's good too. And uh, be re- back tomorrow uh, to talk more subspecies. So... Keep it spooky out there. I will see you on October 5th.